again um boy do i have a lot to update you guys on just in life in general so many things have happened if you've been with me along this entire ride kudos to you uh if you're new here then i guess i'll just fill you in on the things that have happened what's been going on and why i'm here right now if you guys have followed me along the way you'd know that myself and my partner moved to Victoria last year. We spent about nine months, I think, in Victoria in total. Uh, it was pretty tough. It was in and out of lockdowns because lockdowns in Victoria are crazy. A big reason why I chose to move was because of career decisions. I wanted to expand my contacts, get more work, and that was working until lockdowns came and just destroyed everything. But I still powered on, I still made a lot of amazing contacts and got to talk to some amazing brands and things like that, so it was really exciting. It definitely had its ups and downs. We went through a lot of things. Then lockdowns got really bad. Our apartment was horrendous and it was one of those things where we were like surely this is it and as soon as we'd say that something else would happen and a lot of it i can't get into in this video because it's very personal um and very heavy but uh i'll just one step at a time holy shit <laughs> when lockdowns got really bad uh we were stuck in our apartment our apartment had no balcony it was just like a box pretty much and it had super weird vibes. We, like weird things started happening and we were like, okay, this feels super not okay. So we literally refused to sleep in our room. We pulled out our mattress and we put it in the living room, put a lamp there, set it up so it was really cool. We had this big window where there was this amazing tree and we basically camped out there for the rest of the time. Anyway, keep in mind, this is the middle of winter. And I was born in Darwin, <laughs> right? Hot and pretty much raised on the Gold Coast. Hot. <laughs> so my climatized self to hot weather got thrown into Melbourne in the middle of winter. This apartment had no heating. We had seen vents when we were inspecting. We assumed that that was the heating system. It wasn't, it was just a ventilation system. We moved in and suddenly, as soon as we move in, the heater is sitting on the floor, broken. It's a broken wall heater. So long story short, we call up the agency. We're like, what's the go with this broken heater on the floor? And they're like, don't worry, we'll get someone out straight away to fix it. Basically, time goes by, nobody comes to fix it. Then eventually someone comes to get a quote and we have that guy come in, he gives the quote, nothing happens. No work report filed, nothing. And so we are freezing our butts off. I've already gotten sick at this point because I can't even explain to you, like in this apartment, you'd walk around and you could breathe and see your breath all the time. So it was cold and then it just got colder when it hit nighttime. So it was like, there wasn't a single point where I felt warm in this apartment. My insides were just freezing. It was terrible. We had a horrible time and it made us like bicker at each other because we were so fucking cold because we lived in a freezer. <laughs> and also we couldn't leave the apartment. We could only leave the apartment for like what, one hour of exercise or something like that. So we were going stir crazy. Fast forward, we get another person come in, give us a quote, 
he's like this one will go through we'll get it done we can get it done in a day all good again nothing happens we're like what is going on we're like halfway through our lease and we have no heating and it's actually we found out a law in victoria that you must have heating working in the apartments before people can move in otherwise it's unlivable so the whole thing went through i won't get into the whole thing but we never got heating <laughs> our cooktop broke which meant our oven broke because they were connected to the same sort of like power system i don't know we had to turn the whole thing off because it just was unsafe and so anyway we got our bond back we moved out luckily my partner's dad and his stepmom took us in and gave us a place to live for months and months and months while so many things unfolded we decided at one point that we had enough of victoria we wanted to go home to the gold coast and when we made that decision we were like okay let's get everything in order and let's plan to move back granted this was when it was extremely hard for queensland residents to get back into queensland so we planned to go home then ensued the five month journey of packing being ready to go our plans being destroyed having to unpack and our hopes and dreams being crushed basically this happened for five months so we'd pack have everything planned to go ready unexpected life event would happen and we'd have to unpack and that's it and that happened an unbelievable amount of times like it was just heartbreak over heartbreak over heartbreak over heartbreak like hopes being brought up us thinking we're going and then fuck you you're not going it was the most grueling experience and the life events just kept getting more intense as we'd go through we were both losing our minds like honestly i'm surprised that i'm even sitting here right now that was the point where i was at I don't know, there was a silver lining as to why we kept getting held back. Another reason why we couldn't come back and another reason why our dreams were crushed again was because I suddenly got COVID. <laughs> and now I can officially say that I've had COVID. Awesome. <laughs> it was genuinely though a very scary experience because my lungs are extremely, extremely weak to the point where I get out of breath when I'm talking to people. My voice will crack like a pubescent boy. It's a wonder that I can even still sing properly, but it's something I really have to work on um, if I want to maintain it the way it's going. Uh, but at this point, I can't even blow up a balloon. It's something I've been trying to work on doing, but I that is the extent of the weakness of my lungs. And that's because I had scoliosis surgery back when I was, what, 14 or 15? I think I might have been 15. Yeah, I had scoliosis surgery and it basically um, caused part of my diaphragm to like collapse pretty much, which is what I got told anyway. And that is why just everything's extremely weak, except for my core and my back muscles and all that kind of stuff. In terms of my lungs and my diaphragm and stuff, <laughs> terrible, weak, forget about it. So I was like, if I got COVID, I'd probably be straight on a ventilator, most likely die. So I made sure I was taking all precautions that I could to prevent it, but things happened, it spread through the household, and I got sick. Luckily, it didn't affect me too much, it gave me a lot of breathing difficulties, and that was really uncomfortable and scary, but I ended up being fine. Coming through, I just was on bed rest. For like two weeks or something like that and yeah it was just a hard time i don't think i've fully recovered totally since it really stuffed up my body um this year in general particularly in the last few months have been the most challenging on my health i am in no way healthy if blood tests were graded like a school exam fucking fail but i'm getting there it's fixable it's all good i'm working my way through it <laughs> I've never been completely 100% lucky with health, but in the same way I have been because a lot of the things I've been through could have turned out really badly, but I'm here, I'm standing, I'm able to run and exercise and stretch and it's, it's great. So I'm very 
very very very lucky on our final stages it was probably like the last two months of being like okay we're gonna wait for these borders to open for residents and we're gonna go then a big big fucking curveball got thrown into the mix which i won't get into because it's extremely personal and something that i just would rather keep to myself um but it really threw a crazy thing into the mix and was extremely and is extremely traumatic we're getting through it everything's fine um but yeah it definitely took a humongous toll on my health and that is the reason why i've been so declined in my health and i'm at this point pretty fucking frail <laughs> but i'm getting everything fixed and sorted and through like isolation and stuff like that once we're out of isolation because we got put back in iso for new years um i'm gonna be getting all that sorted and just getting back to normal but for now i'm just riding the wave but it's been really 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 taxing like to the point where i've been to the hospital multiple times <laughs> but you don't have to worry i'm fine i'm getting through it it's just been very 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 taxing and honestly life-changing i don't think i'll ever be the same ever again to summarize because i can't really go into detail of some of the things that have happened during this period just out of privacy reasons i just want to talk about what it's taught me this whole experience because going into this year i really want to reflect on just how much i've learned and grown since last year if i think about who i was at the beginning of last year to the end of last year to like now sort of thing I would say the only thing that can encompass truly how I feel is that I've grown 10 years in the span of one. That's kind of like the gravity of this whole experience. And I don't, I'm not over exaggerating. Like I literally feel like I've grown 10 years in one year. And a thousand percent, I can say with full confidence that I am a completely changed person some ways for good in some ways there are things that i now need to work on in order to allow them to be things that help me to grow and not diminish me as a person but nonetheless i am kind of entering this new chapter of life which funnily enough falls on the new year and it's kind of like the perfect time because i'm getting to know this new me and i'm accepting that this new me is here to stay and I'm okay with that because more than ever this whole experience has taught me the importance of family back in Victoria we had an incredible support system and I felt so loved and so supported throughout the entire experience no matter what we went through no matter what was going on I was and still feel so supported from that from that side of the family coming back to my family who I missed so incredibly much through this whole experience particularly when the door got slammed shut to come home so many times and it just broke me honestly luckily i had my amazing auntie and my cousin who were in victoria who helped me through and i got to see so i actually had some you know connection there as well to my own family but coming back really made me realize one how much my family's taught me to how much I've learnt and how much I've matured since leaving um, just from the values that have been instilled in myself and the way that I now carry myself as a whole the importance of family and having a family system and what it means to be part of a family um, the importance of love forgiveness strength courage just all of these things all of these really big things <laughs> there are going to be chapters in your life that are fucking terrible and filled with so much shit and you're not going to know why but in the end those can be the chapters that are the most important like last year that chapter was so incredibly important and such a defining year of my life that i don't think will ever lose its gravitas because it's the exact year that brought me to where I am now. And I think this is a really important, this is gonna be a really important chapter, I feel. Like, 
I feel like big things are gonna happen. And I have this like inner knowing of that, it's really weird. Cause yeah, um, it's really strengthened my work ethic. It's really made me a lot more goal focused and it's made me a lot more active on my goals too. Like I feel like I can do more than plan now. I can actually take action and be so motivated out of the strength that has come from this last year. And it's also taught me to come back to the things that make me happy and to the things that I love doing and to really live life to the fullest and take every opportunity that I can. I feel very content with all the things that I've learned, which makes healing a lot easier, if that makes any sense. Coming back to the things that I love, like YouTube, because this whole time I've wanted to come back to YouTube, but it's just not been the right time. I've had to go through things in life and I always told myself from the get-go when I started this channel all those years ago that if there was ever a point where I couldn't film a video without pushing myself to or overthinking it or just not feeling it, I would stop. And I've stuck by that. And it may have made me an inconsistent person and it may have been the reason why I've lost my audience and why I've lost subscribers and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Like. One thing I can be confident in is that I've been true to myself this entire time. Now that I'm ready, now that I'm entering this new chapter of my life, I know that I'm ready to come back here and I know that I'm ready to stay and to do what I love. And the amazing thing is that YouTube itself has been really defining for me as well because it's documented so many parts of my life. They may not be like up on YouTube anymore, but they are still there in my heart. And it was the start of so many things. It was the start of my own personal spiritual journey. It was the start of becoming who I am now, which I know younger me would look at me now. And I feel like she'd be proud. I feel like she'd somewhat be like, what the fuck, dude? But also she'd be like, that's, that's who I wanna be. So that gives me consolation and it gives me motivation to move forward because I know I have a long way to go. I'm only really 23. But I am excited for this new chapter and I'm excited to come back to YouTube to document, I don't know, my adult life, moving into adulthood or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, anyway, if you stuck around for this entire video, thank you very much. And I'm excited to share this whole year with you and to carry it through with you. And a lot of exciting things are coming. If you don't know, I have my passion project, which I'm turning into my business, Jupiter's Corner. The link to the website is down below. The link to the channel for my podcast will be somewhere. I've got my podcast on Spotify, also other podcast streaming platforms. As I said, my website's up and running. I've got my Instagram up and running. Uh, and I'm almost, almost, almost finished my meditation teaching course so then I'll be able to run meditation classes so I'll be doing them on zoom I'll be doing some free ones on youtube live when I can and I'm going to be doing physical classes for those people who live on the gold coast as well so uh, a lot to look forward to a lot of work that I have to do but there's a lot of things in the pipelines which I'm really excited for thank you so much for watching um yeah can you tell I haven't been on here for so long? Um, okay, well, thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.